morning. Today we've got a uh, interesting video for you. We're going to talk about the difference between a trawler, a sailing catamaran, and a sailing monohull. We're going to specifically be talking about boats that are in the 40 to 50 foot range. They have at least three staterooms and two heads. They're the type of vessel that would fit a family very similar to ours. Now if money is not really an issue for you and you're in the 750 to 10 million dollar range, this video is not going to be for you. You go ahead and buy whatever you want, call us, let us know where you'll be, we'll meet you there, okay? Make sure and stay tuned all the way to the end of the video where Julian and I are going to discuss why we chose what we chose in order to live this lifestyle. So the first thing you're going to need to consider when you're looking at buying a boat is how are you going to use the boat? That is the most important thing to consider first and foremost. There's many different ways to use your boat. Are you planning on just living at a dock and enjoying boat life that way? If that's the case, any vessel would work for you. You have to consider, though, a monohull and a trawler are um, single slip. A catamaran is most likely going to be a double slip, so you're going to pay one and a half to two times as much for mm -hmm. that same length of slip because it's twice as wide. If you're going to do coastal cruising, uh, known as the ICW around the eastern United States, or Bahamas cruising, you have to consider bridge heights. So if you have a sailing vessel, many times to fit under bridges, you either have to wait for a drawbridge or you have to take your mast down on fixed bridges unless you go with a trawler. And a lot of times then you have to consider the height of the trawler of a fly bridge. Mm -hmm. Is it low enough that you can fit under bridges? Or there's another type of cruising. So the other cruising would be your ocean crossing. I'm going to cross over to Europe or I'm going to go to the South Pacific. This is really important because you, if you're going to go anything with a, an engine, you got to think about fuel capacity. Mm -hmm. You'll have to go with what we call a long-range cruiser or an LRC is what sometimes how they're put online. And you're going to need thousands and thousands of gallons of fuel. Mm -hmm. Usually that's two to 3,000 gallons or more. Or you're going to need some form of a sail vessel. Now that you've decided how you're going to use your vessel and where you're going to be cruising or living, next we're going to talk about cost, space, weather and conditions and how those all affect your buying process. Let's talk about the cost of acquisition or your purchase price. You can get a 20 to 30 year old trawler anywhere from 30,000 to 200,000 depending on the age, size and condition. Monohull sailboats are similar in price to trawlers. Again, many factors affect this. There's a huge difference between a $30,000 boat and a $200,000 boat. Lastly, when it comes to catamarans, there's a big difference between a cat built in the 80s and one built 2000 or newer. For our comparison, we're talking about a 2000 or newer. The reason is that the older cats were not designed as a functional liveaboard option for families. A used catamaran goes for 250 to 450,000 on average. Maintenance. Every single boat is going to have maintenance, and it doesn't matter what kind of boat you end up in. It could be a trawler, it could be a monohull sailboat, it could be a catamaran. They're all going to have engines and propellers and shafts. They're all going to have through holes and cooling hoses. And they're all going to use diesel and have coolant. If your boat has a generator, then you have to deal with that. Maybe solar panel, uh, water maker. All that stuff is going to need maintenance. It really doesn't matter what kind of boat you get. You're going to have to do maintenance. <laughs> cost let's talk about the elephant in the room the cost of moving your boat around either sailing or cruising a sailboat if you've never heard the phrase is the most expensive way to travel for free I have two Ford Lehman 185 horsepower diesel engines I burn four gallons an hour using both of my engines and I move about eight knots in that hour so my fuel consumption is quite low 
If you have a faster power boat, you just throttle it down and you use yet less fuel. On a sailboat or a catamaran, many times they're using one engine and sailing at the same time. So there's still some fuel consumption to be considered. If you're going to sail for a passage solely, you have a cost of maintaining your sails, your rigging, your boom, your lines, all these extra things that you're going to have to replace every one to 10 years, depending on what you buy. You always get what you pay for. There's definitely quality involved. As Chris just mentioned, the cost of us motoring versus the cost of a sailboat or a catamaran sailing or using their motors. You see a lot of other sailing vessels and motor vessels motor the majority of the time. It's rare that we see sailboats cruising 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. So with that said, let's talk about weather and the conditions that it takes to cruise or sail. This is an area we didn't really think about. What kind of conditions are we gonna be comfortable actually moving the boat around in? Mm -hmm. As far as trawlers and motorboats go, we like it smooth and calm. Very calm. And that just makes it simple. We move on calm days, uh, we hunker down for weather, Yes, the boat can handle big seas, but we don't want to be out in big seas. When it comes to uh, sailing catamarans and sailing monohulls, having talked to a number of cruisers, it is amazing how many of them fall into our same category. We have had sailboats tell us we're actually consider ourselves a trawler with a sail. <laughs> um, and what I mean by that is they don't want to be in the conditions that are good for sailing. Yes, the boat's designed to do it. Yes, it can handle it. They don't like it. Mama may not like to do that. <laughs> right. So it takes about 15 knots of wind or higher to get like a really good sailing day mm -hmm. in order to actually be moving more than like four knots. And so in those conditions at 15 plus knots of wind, you're going to get three, four, five foot seas, mm -hmm. following seas or on the beam, beaten into it, tacking. They just don't enjoy it. It's not an enjoyable cruising day, so they don't do it. Therefore, they motor the majority of the time anyway. Yeah. Don't be confused with a hardcore sailor or maybe a person who likes to race sailboats and someone who wants to live a cruising, relaxing lifestyle. Yeah. Those are completely different um, people. And it's okay. You don't have to be a hardcore sailor to be a cruiser. That's why you don't have to be an expert sailor to come and live the lifestyle as a cruiser on like a monohull or a catamaran sailboat. Just go on the nice, calm days. Enjoy yourself. Just don't kid yourself. Be honest with yourself <laughs> and buy what you're comfortable with and what you want. Another consideration when you're thinking about how you're going to use your vessel is you got to think about the draft. Mm -hmm. This is something we didn't realize how important it was at first. Mm -hmm. In the Bahamas, you want what they call a shoal draft boat, which is something less than five feet of draft. When you get up over five feet, you get very limited in the Florida Keys and in the Bahamas where you can cruise. So let's talk about the different space on the different models of boats. They're all going to be very similar as far as they're going to have the same type of space. And what I mean by that is they're going to have an outside deck space. They're going to have your inside. It's going to have your salon and your, your galley. And it's going to have your cabins along with your heads. It's really a matter of flow. How is it laid out? And how do you move from one space to the other? So let's take a look at that and see the differences. Trawlers have a lot of outside areas to spend your time in. Our upper flybridge and our back deck and table, which is one of our favorite places to hang out, is large and spacious. From the back, we go down the side deck to the front bow, which is where we do our laundry. Also, from the back deck, we can go down and enter the stairs to our salon, which is a large open space, fitting a full-size couch. Continuing towards the back, or aft of the boat, is the master suite. An aft cabin usually is wide enough for a queen-size bed, walk-around space, and lots of storage cabinets. Also down the same hallway is a cabin with bunk beds, and on the opposite side is a head or the bathroom. Back in the salon, heading towards the front of the boat, is the galley and another seating area with a table. We also have a third cabin in the very bow of the boat with its own head. Catamarans have two sugar scoops to hop on when you first board the vessel. The outside space usually holds a large table and a seating area on one side, while the cockpit and helm are on the other side. From the outside space, you can walk inside on the same level and you come to the galley where there's another seating area next to the kitchen. Through the front door, if they have one, is a third seating area with a trampoline. 
Then when you go down the stairs, you'll find a cabin in the front and a cabin in the back with their bathrooms in between. Down the side deck, you get access to the top of the boat and the back where the sugar scoops are. A sailboat has a single sugar scoop to enter the back deck or helm area. Many sailboats have a seating area, a center table, and two wheels to steer from either side of the cockpit. Straight ahead is a companionway to go down a set of stairs into the salon and galley. Usually on opposite sides of the boat, this is where sailboats are the widest. On this vessel, there are two cabins in the back of the aft and a master suite in the front. What is it that we're trying to get you to take away from this video? Honestly, it's just to help provoke some thought. We want, if you're looking for a boat and you're looking to do this lifestyle, uh, don't make any assumptions or just jump at the first boat you see necessarily. Just because it's a sailboat doesn't mean it's cheaper to operate. Hey, yeah. Just because it has two engines and no sails doesn't mean it's way more expensive and we can't afford fuel. Right. Um, like I say, there's a big difference between a, um, a a three four hundred thousand dollar newer catamaran and a an older trawler with with uh, engines that don't use as much fuel. Uh, now that being said, you buy a big crazy super yacht and you're going to run that thing at twenty five knots and burn a hundred gallons an hour. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's a different category altogether. So, um, but we bought a trawler because why? So we bought a trawler, it just comes down to finances. It was the most cost effective thing that we could do to still live this lifestyle. We really still want a catamaran. We wanted a catamaran back when we first started shopping and that's still our goal in the next couple years, but we wanted to get going. So my biggest recommendation is get what you can afford. Get what you can afford so you can just get going now and you can always upgrade later because we are in anchorages with these beautiful boats and many of them are boats I would love to have one day but at least we still have the same backyard we get to do the same hikes we get to see the same places so regardless of the boat that I have I'm still getting to do the adventure that I wanted and you got to remember it doesn't matter who you are or what boat you have everybody always wants a bigger boat yep you yep. get those super yachts down in, in West Palm and you drive through there and it's a 50 million dollar boat that guy with that 50 million dollar boat he wants th that one that's a hundred million dollars. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what you have, guys. Just yeah. do what you got to do to get out here on the water. And and if you want to live this lifestyle, you just have to make sacrifices and and decide what it is you can live with and what you can't, and just go for it. So we do love our trawler. We are um, very grateful for our trawler for the space. We don't feel like we have a ton of cost associated with running it besides regular maintenance, which is in every boat regardless of if it's brand new or not. And we will one day hopefully still be in a catamaran. Financially, it's not as economical as our trawler, but we love that stability and we want the options for future travel. So thanks again for watching. We really appreciate it. Let us know what kind of boat you're looking for, where you're shopping, what your extra questions are. We're happy to answer them. We really appreciate it. Make sure you come back next Friday and watch us at 8 a.m. Enjoy the journey.